wake up. What the fuck are you doing? Sneaking in here like Versace. Versace was the victim. Gunanen was the killer. We're here to make you the killer. Bill, who are these men? Nothing to fear, miss. We're just gonna turn your husband into a man. Lock and load. This was my favorite episode of the entire season. Fight night. Dollar Bill versus Mafi. Who knew that the writers were so funny? This episode was hilarious. I was laughing out loud. LOLing in real life. Why don't they put more jokes into this show? Like, they're good at it. I actually want a comedy spinoff featuring Wags, Spiros, and Charles Sr. It'd be like Three's Company, except despicable, but funny. It's like, what hijinks are these three gonna get into this week? Get some girls pregnant and force them to have abortions? Ruin lives left and right? Who knows? Eh, maybe it'd be a dark comedy. But in this video, I wanted to talk about who that scary looking big dude was that woke up Dollar Bill. His name is actually Jocko Willink, which is a great name for either a badass Navy SEAL or a family friendly clown. In this case, it's the name of the former. So I want to talk about Jocko a bit and then get into the mindset of billionaires, which can be really weird sometimes. I got some stories for you. But first, I want to remind you that we opened up our price action masterclass. Look how surprised and excited I am in this picture. I just can't believe it. Four 40% off. What a deal. Or should I say steal? <laughs> no, but this course is great. But it's only great if you're interested in going deep into the theory about price action and really understanding it from a professional perspective. If you're looking for some indicators that's going to show you some magic equation in the market, well, this isn't that because there's no such thing as you will learn in this course. So if you're serious about using technical analysis and price action, definitely check it out. The course is only open until Sunday, then it's going to close. The discount's gone, but there's no risk to check it out because there's a 60 day money back guarantee. So if you didn't like the course after you took it, I just give you your money back. No problem. So zero risk to check it out. Go do that before tomorrow, which should be Sunday based on when this video is coming out. But I'll link to the page where you can learn more up above and down below in the description and comments. Go check it out. Okay, back to Jocko, which is this guy. Look at him, just a beast. And I actually first heard about him on the Tim Ferriss show. Who, if you recognize this face, he also made a cameo in this Billions episode. It was pretty great. I was excited to see him. So here's a description from Tim. Jocko is one of the scariest human beings imaginable. He's a lean 230 pounds, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu expert who used to tap out 20 Navy SEALs per workout. What the hell? I did jiu-jitsu. That is not easy. He's a legend in the special operations world. So he enlisted in the Navy after high school and spent 20 years in the SEAL teams, first as a SEAL operator, then a SEAL officer. And during his second tour in Iraq, he led the SEAL task unit Bruiser in the Battle of Ramadi, which was some of the toughest and most sustained combat by the SEAL team since Vietnam. And under his leadership, Bruiser became the most highly decorated special operations unit in the entire war in Iraq and helped bring stability to Ramadi. Jocko was awarded the Bronze Star and the Silver Star. And Ramadi was where the most violence was. It was a crazy period. If you listen to some of the interviews that Jocko does, it's really interesting to hear about. But basically, this guy is a complete badass American hero. And now he's become pretty popular because of these interviews he's done. And what he does now is coach executives based off his leadership experience, which you know, he's been in some crazy, crazy situations. High stress. Actually, high stress is an understatement. But he is very very qualified to be coaching these people. And you can follow him on Twitter too. The guy is just so extreme. All he posts is extreme stuff. And if you ever listen to him talk like in these interviews and actually he has his own podcast too, which I had to stop listening to because it was just way too intense. He put on this voice too, which I assume is not even a fake voice. That's probably just his real voice. He's like, how are you going to get it done? Just take one step in front of another step foot by foot move your ass and i'd be driving just shaking i'm like this, this, this is too much and then on twitter you only post black and white pictures of what he's doing this one november foxtrot sierra basically every day he posts what time he wakes up which is like 4 or 4 30 and then in every interview he'll get audience questions like how do i wake up early how do i wake up at 4 30 like you jocko and his response just do it that's some motivation. And then after he wakes up at 4.30 in the morning, he goes and does like three hours of just straight lifting weights and doing crazy stuff. And he'll post pictures. He'll be like, the aftermath, keep going. And you see all his calluses. And normally you see a lot of sweat on the ground. Oh yeah. Here's the sweat picture. Could be sweat, could be blood. Who knows, it's in black or white. Not making fun of him, but honestly, this guy is amazing. And he has really good stuff to say. You should definitely listen to his interviews. Now, the reason he was in Billions is because billionaires love guys like this. So billionaires normally have security, right? Whether it's necessary or not. And for their security, they love hiring special forces guys like Jocko. So like I said, is it necessary for them to be really crazy about their security teams? Probably not, but they feel 
that they're super important. And also, it's a great way to show off. Because at a certain point, when you reach a certain level where you have so much money, pretty soon you, along with all your peers, you could pretty much buy whatever you want. So you all end up having the same supercars, the same jets, the same houses. You all have the wife and the three 20 year old girlfriends. So the question becomes, how do you compete? How do you still maintain that caddy, real wives of Beverly Hills relationship with all your boys? How do you still one up them and assert your dominance over your friends? Because you're all rich, right? Well, you start competing with your security forces. Who has the most badass people protecting them? So they'll be like, yeah, you got a one armed green beret? Well, this guy's a Navy SEAL who fought in Ramadi. He did eight tours. He eats steel for breakfast. He can lift tanks. And yeah, he's my personal security. And that's how they compare dick sizes with each other. It's sad, but it happens. It's the billionaire mindset. And how do I know? Am I a billionaire? Of course, my jet is actually right behind me. No, it's it's not. But Alex explained this to me. And Alex, you've heard me talk about before. He's my business partner at Macroops, which is our macro research and consulting firm that we co-founded together along with Tyler. So he's our head macro researcher guy there. And he's actually a badass just like Jocko. He's former special operations too. He was actually a sniper. So you know that movie American Sniper with Chris Kyle? He basically did all that same stuff. And he was actually in those same areas right before Chris Kyle. So you know they were already pretty cleared out. You know, Chris Kyle came after. No, I'm kidding. They're both great. But a lot of his friends that were in the military with him and doing similar type stuff, they end up working these security jobs for these super rich dudes. And they do it because it's a pretty easy job and you get paid paid a ton of money, which I think they fully deserve an easy job after what they've done. And I'm glad these billionaires insecurities feed money to these people. They deserve. And yeah, normally it's a pretty easy job, but sometimes it's not because these rich dudes can get a little nutty. So Tyler, my other partner in Macro Ops, and you'll meet him if you actually check out that course because he built the whole thing. He narrates it too. The uh, price action course we were talking about. Well, he used to work at a family office in Texas and a family office, which I think we've talked about before, but it's just an office that manages a bunch of money for either a single family or a few families. When I say a bunch of money, I'm talking into the billions. So the head of that family office, who was basically a billionaire, he got a little crazy sometimes. So in that office, like I was talking about, he had his security forces, which were all super soldier dudes like Jocko. Now remember, this is Texas, okay? So the security forces plus every analyst, every single person in that office had automatic weapons. They stayed strapped at all times. So the analysts who worked at the desk, underneath their desk, they would have submachine guns attached with magnets so they could easily pull it out because you know you, you need protection and it's texas so guns everywhere and one time someone saw some guy or something ruffling through the garbage outside so this spooked the head of the office the billionaire dude so the whole office went on lockdown and lockdown meant that they barricaded the doors turned off all the lights built little forts and just took out their guns and just had them pointed at all the doors <laughs> basically they were sitting there waiting for the invasion to happen because somebody was was outside, I think, is, is some stupid like that. And this was all at the direction of the top billionaire rich dude who ran the family office. But you know, they're, they're important guys. So, you know, gotta do what you gotta do. And you can just imagine all the ex special forces guys just shaking their heads, but they're getting paid. Alex told me about one of his friends that worked one of these details. So all of a sudden his billionaire boss got spooked. So he had his entire security force pack up all his belongings and they went in a caravan of cars across the country. So they had some military jeeps they had a lambo they had a ferrari all his cars and they traveled all the way across the country and they just hit out for a few weeks you know until the guy felt better what spooked him who knows but if he says they're going then they're going billionaires do some weird things and you know people in finance in general do weird things too one thing that i notice is that a lot of people in finance and i'm not talking about all of them but a lot of them they have very fragile egos it's like the more successful they get the more fragile their ego becomes do they got more to lose does success come with the imposter syndrome I, I don't know, but they always have to prove to everyone how important they are and how smart they are. And the whole smartest guy in the room thing, that's a cultural thing, which is why everyone in finance is always trying to measure their dicks and one up each other. And that's what makes guys like Stan Druckenmiller so much more impressive because he doesn't have ego at all. And if you read what the best investors do, they get rid of their ego. They're not so insecure like these other guys. And that's the reason why they're the top tier. It's why Druckenmiller is one of the greatest of all time. And if you don't know who Stan Druckenmiller is, I do a bunch of videos on him 
them all the time. You can check out that playlist right here. But it's interesting the difference you see between a pretty smart guy in finance very high up versus the absolute best. Because the huge, huge difference may not even be that one's smarter than the other. It's really that one has conquered their ego, while the other is just a ball of insecurity. And it's not just guys that are high up in finance. <laughs> the lower guys suck too. Have you ever been on Seeking Alpha? Well, if you haven't, just jump into the comments section. You'll see great examples of people just bitching and arguing, being infallible. It's terrible. It's like they make a thesis and then all of a sudden that thesis defines their whole life and they got to ride or die by it. It's all about being right. Who cares about making money? So basically everything is ass backwards. And it's funny because we all watch billions and we see how much ego is tied into the finance world. But then you also see the way to succeed in the finance world is to not have that ego. So it's kind of a contradiction. Kind of funny if you think about it. And speaking of funny, this is the reason why there's no jokes in finance, why finance is so dry and boring most of the time. No one's making jokes or doing fun stuff because then you won't be taken seriously. And you got to be taken seriously as an investor. That's your ego on the line. But that's why I appreciate you guys that you're here. You know, we make jokes. You get it. I'm so happy. Fallible is a thing. Because the lack of humor and the lack of making fun of yourself was one of the worst things about finance. I hated it. Which is once again why I appreciate the fallible community. I'm so proud of this community. And if you want to learn directly from an investor who doesn't have that ego problem, then check out that price action masterclass with Tyler, the guy with the guns under his desk. Well, not anymore. Maybe. He's still in Texas. But he goes deep into what you really need to understand about price action. It's a six and a half hour course, which is pretty damn long, but we really had to dive deep into some topics. And Tyler, like I said, he worked at the family office and he's a quant expert. So he's the most qualified to be teaching this course. I remember it's 40% off right now, but this thing closes on Sunday, which is tomorrow. So definitely get in there and check it out. I'll link to it up above and down below in the comments and description. And remember, 60 day money back guarantee. So you could check it out. If you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. Pretty simple, no risk. And if you like this billions video, then make sure you check out all our billions breakdowns. I'll link to that playlist up above right here. And this is the last billions video I'm gonna do this season. This is it. We've done so many. Time to move on. Time to move on until next year when the season comes back. Then we'll do a bunch more. In the meantime though, I got some stuff for you guys. I'm working on it. New stuff, you're gonna like it. If you wanna see that stuff, so descriptive, right? Subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you get an email notification when our new videos come out. We're publishing many times a week, all about business, finance, billions, not anymore, maybe more, maybe about stuff that's like billions. But anyway, subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Stay fallible out there, bye.